Let's go to Tom in Cleveland, Ohio. What's up, Tom? Hey, John. How's it going? Good, man. Go Bengals. What's up, dude? Hey, absolutely. Absolutely. Wrong town, but I'll, I'll go for them. The Browns aren't in anymore. I was going to so. say, at this point, y'all just need to be cheering for any Ohioan group, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, All right. So, so what's up, dude? So, John, I had a question. Um, I, I wrote down a little bit of it, but main question is, uh, how to reunite with my wife and marriage, um, and kind of a big story behind that. I did start my own business in 2018, and I think that's kind of what started it all. Um, she kind of took, we're, I'm married uh, to my beautiful wife since 2014, um, but she was doing the finances at the time. Then, of course, when I you know got into my own business, uh, I started looking, you know, into the finances, numbers, stuff like that, and started doing budgeting. Then I, I noticed, you know, I thought we were under overspending, and it turned into, you know, trying to put the blame on her. Turned into arguments over a two-year, you know, period, and it turns, you know, it turned out to be I was being more like a dad to her yep. than her husband. I was just about to uh, say that, man. Yeah. Good for you. Good for and, you for and, catching that. And I, yeah, I really, I mean, I, I own up to it. And I, I know what, you know, it happened And you know, long story short, I wasn't her safe place anymore. Yep. Now, I mean, I, I did commit myself about a year and a half ago, you know, no more haggling over, you know, overspending and stuff like that. Um, you know, do it together, which has been good. Although I, I don't think we're back to where we can just, you know, openly talk cuddle, you know, simply enjoy each other every day and date. And how do I be that husband for her that she adores, you know, to be that safe space again? Yeah. Number one, dude, I just want to applaud you, man. I wish every husband in America would have the courage and the strength to do what you've done, which is to look in the mirror and say, I, I, was doing the best I could with the tools I had and those tools ended up making a bigger mess than helping. And I want to, I, I want to do something different. I want to be better. Good for you, man. Mm -hmm. That's hard, Tom. That's hard. So I want you to own that. Okay. Um, you're not going to like my answer. Is that cool? Absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm open. And I'll also say that a lot of the beefcake, like, yeah, bro, let's go snap into a Slim Jim guys who listen to the show are going to naturally be like, oh, yeah, whatever, dude, and when I give you the answer, okay? And I don't care because I'm right. And usually I'm like, ah, maybe I'm right on this, okay? You have gone away. Basically what you've done is you have um, had a ceasefire. You have not dealt with the issues of peace, Right? Right. And so what's beneath the question, what's beneath your concern about overspending? So the magic, you want to connect with your wife, reconnect with your wife. It's not on how many bullets are being fired. It's not, you're spending too much at Costco. You're just blowing. We can eat for way cheaper than that. Why are you spending so much? It's not that. It is, I'm, I'm starting a new business. And I'm terrified that I'm going to wreck the family finances. I am scared to death about money because I grew up and I didn't have any money growing up. And I want to be a better husband than my dad was for us. And I don't know how to do it. I'm trying. And when I see numbers like this, my body just reacts in a terrified way. The magic word here is vulnerability. It's being honest with your wife, not about how smart you are and how good you are at Excel spreadsheets and how in, in nitpicking all of the things she buys or doesn't buy. Beneath that is, I can't breathe. I'm scared to death. We're staring down the barrel of a recession. I'm afraid we're going to lose customers. I'm trying to hang on to my new business. Whatever is going on, people don't connect with one another over strength. They can accomplish great things. They can become partners, but you deepen a relationship through vulnerability. Does that make sense? That makes hundred percent sense. And that, that a while back ago, we, we had a good conversation and completely openness. And it, it was like, um, you know, 
couple hundred pounds off the shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, I was just, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of editing, uh, my book manuscript. Here is a, a, a straight, and I don't know if I mentioned this on the show the other day, I was having a conversation with somebody about it. This is strange to me that it, it, I had never thought this through. But up until like 100 or maybe 200 years ago, everybody lived in a house that was relative, like one room, right? Maybe mm-hmm. there was a second room for the grownups, but everyone lived in one room. And so everybody knew if somebody had diarrhea or if somebody was sick or if somebody hooked up with so-and-so, the idea of secrets is new, right? The idea mm-hmm. that I can go in my room, shut my door, put a podcast in, and go to a completely different planet than my kids and my spouse, that I can pick up a book and go down a rabbit hole or watch my own series on my iPad in my room with the door shut with my headphones on, our bodies aren't designed for that. Why do I tell you that? What well, you just said, the 200 pounds like off your back, there is a biology to secrets. So secrets will kill you. And secrets come out, that angst you feel, that weight you feel about, I feel like when we're sleeping together, you're not fully with me. And it makes me nervous. It makes me feel like I'm, I'm alone. It makes me feel like, right? It comes out as, we don't ever have enough sex. Or you don't ever do anything cool in the, or you say nothing. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And yep, the 100%. secret is way down there, which is, man, we're, 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 we're sleeping together. We are sharing a house. We're raising kids together, but we are two inches apart and 2000 miles away from each other. All of that, my brother, I don't care how tough you are, how strong you are, how big your truck is, whether you served in the military. I don't care what it, it all starts with vulnerability, sitting in front of somebody and saying, this is what terrifies me about where we are right now. And here's the ugly thing about vulnerability. She can roast you. Right? She can destroy you. Oh, my little pansy husband is just whining now. Oh, great. You want me to, here's your violin. And wives will do that. It's awful. It's, it's heartbreaking because the, they want to be adored. They want to be loved. And the only way they can be truly loved is if their husband has a space where they can be safe and say, I'm scared too. And that's just the world we've got right now. Somebody's got to go first. And I'm pointing at you, man. Go first. So tell me one thing. What are you scared about, brother? Well, I, I think you nailed it. You know, just with the business, although, you know, financially, it's not really a, um, a struggle, but it does cross my mind, you know, every day with, uh, you know, gosh, what if this thing goes, you know, goes belly up, but, um, you know, it's been real good. It's been real good. I got, you know, a good support from her from the start. And like, like I said, I didn't notice that, that I was pushing it on her until, you know, two years in and, and, uh, you know, I, I really regret it now, but. So um, let, let me, let me tell you something my wife told me. Um, so, uh, I, I've worked in education for my whole career. And without realizing it, I'd worked in nonprofits my whole career. I didn't, I didn't mean to, I never set out to, I just did. And uh-huh. in the, the universities and the, in the schools that I worked at, um, I got a salary and I worked 24, seven, 365. And my salary was always the same. And then I got this job. And if I write another book at night, instead of sleeping, instead of hanging out with my kids, I make more money. If I take another speaking gig, even though I'm exhausted and I got to get on a plane and fly to another city for two hours and then get on another, I make a lot more money. And so in the first three years of working here, I went crazy. I've never experienced this before. And over, uh, it was a few months ago now, my wife sat me down and said, I get to speak into this too, because this is my house too. And this is our life we're building. It's not your job. This is our life. And she said, the money bucket is full. And what she was telling me was, um, and she also said the same thing about my obsession with working out all the time. She said, I am as as attracted to you as I can be. Like one more pound lost isn't going to be like, oh, there it is. And it's not like I'm as attracted to you as I can be. So any more obsession you have with getting more ripped or more cut or more what... She said, that's your problem. That's not for us. You make plenty of money. 
any more money you need to go get is because of your ego, not because of your wife and kids need it. And that was a huge conversation for me. And so I tell you that, Tom, to sit down with her and give her a safe space. Maybe start with, I haven't given you a safe space. I haven't created a place where you could even say your needs out loud. What buckets are full? Is it time for me to hire somebody so that I can be home more and take some of the burden off of you? I can help with bedtime with the kids. I can take them for walks so that you can shower by yourself or use the bathroom by yourself, whatever stage you'll happen to be in. Um, and we're going to make less money because I'm going to hire somebody at work and that's okay. That's the season we're in. Or actually she's terrified about finances too. And so I'm actually going to work a side hustle. I'm going to, I'm going to get another job and I'm going to work crazy for 14 months to get us in a position so that, right. But let her for maybe for the first time speak into this world because I want to change the conversation in this country. She's not supporting your job. Y'all are doing life together and she may have a supporting role I don't even like that language. She's got a equally and powerful and important role. It may not come with a paycheck, but it sure keeps the ship going, right? And you can be the best fisherman in the world, but if there's not somebody driving the ship or if the ship's got holes in it, you're not going to catch any fish. Or you're going to catch a lot of fish, you're going to sink to the bottom of the ocean. And so the supporting and like she's my she's my number one fan and my support. That's, no, dude, it's a it's a team effort. Let her speak into that. But all of that starts with you going first and you being that word that we all hate, man. There's just not a way around it. Being vulnerable. Saying I'm scared to death and I can't breathe. I haven't been the guy that I wanted to be. What kind of husband do you need in this season and how can I help create a world where you feel safe? How can I meet your needs so that you have the capacity to help me meet my needs? Go first, man. Go first. I'm, it's, it's, a, it's an honor to talk to you, Tom. I wish more men had the courage and bravery and strength that you do. Hopefully, they'll listen to this call and be inspired. Thanks for being brave, man. 